Okay, and we're running. Awesome. Hi. Oh god, I'm so frizzy. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about that now. Um, it's raining buckets and it's super warm and I feel a bit flushed if I'm honest. So this is my um, sewing space. Most people have a sewing room. I don't because I live in a very, very tiny flat and this is the only space I could um, yeah, carve out for myself, which is an improvement to my last place because there everything was just everywhere. Like half my fabrics were in my bedroom and then some other stuff was in my bedroom and then stuff was all over the place in the living room and that wasn't that great. And um, now I have it all in one space and I'm going to show you where everything is because I think I did quite a nice job. Okay, here you can see pretty much everything. All of this is my area. And this is my sewing space. It goes up to this bit of the bookshelf here. Like this is all my sewing stuff and it's all in one place, which is really great. And I have my prints up there and I'm going to go into close-ups in a second because you can't see anything. First my fashion prints, this one on the left I bought in Paris. I'm pretty sure it's not a proper fashion print, I think it's a reprint because um, it gets kind of fuzzy in place. It looks like somebody scanned it and then printed it out, but it was a really good quality. I bought it um, in one of those little shops around the Seine. I love doing that. I don't even care if they're real or not. If they're pretty, I'm going to buy them. Then up there. It's one of the reprints, I think, from Schönbrunn or Versailles, I'm not quite sure. My mom gave it to me for a birthday. And it's got some pretty cute images from, I think it's the 1790s, so I quite like that. Down here is the heirloom picture that I have. I got it from my grandma. It used to be my great-grandma. It was a gift from her work colleague. She had like a seamstresses or headmakers. I think she was a milliner, milliner, millineress, millinette, <laughs> I don't know. She, she made mostly hats and stuff and accessories and she started a business during the Nazi era of Germany apparently and her last name was to check. So um, she had to do it with a partner whose last name sounded very very German and that partner she teamed up with, she gave her this very, very cute picture. And there's even something written on the back, but it's written in pencil, so it's really hard to make out. And I tried to find the original, and I think this is a reprint, because I found originals that were slightly different, and this seems to be like a mashed up reprint of that image. Then up here, it's one of my treasures. I'm also pretty sure this is an original. And um, this was my absolute treasure when I was in Paris once. I also bought it along the Seine when it was winter and none of these little stalls were open. But two or three were and this is the one I got. And it was really cheap because there wasn't any color in it. And here is one that I also bought around the Seine and I'm pretty sure this is a reprint too because it just looks like somebody cut it very weirdly and kind of made the edges brown so that it would look more authentic <laughs> but there's a spot in it like somebody dripped some liquid on it and it looks like it's printed on like there was an original and somebody splashed, uh, splashed something onto it and uh, then <laughs> they just scanned that and copied it and that's uh, my telltale sign that this is not a, an original. Mm, this is my desk with... Um, I cleaned this up, by the way. It usually doesn't look like that. It usually looks like crap. Um, there's my sewing box on it and my latest acquisition regarding books, which is uh, dresses and dressmaking. So far, I like it very much. Then my current project, which is a pair of um, transitional stays, which I had been dying to make. My computer, of course, which is my biggest resource in this, and my sewing stuff and uh, my heirloom pair of scissors, which is my favorite. Then underneath my computer, and no, this isn't dirty, I just uh, 
splash nail polish remover onto it. Apparently that takes the color out. I couldn't clean it up anymore because it's been bleached out, so now it looks like that. Of course, um, wow, this looks really white. Here's my trash bin <laughs> and my sewing machine in its case. And of course, my lamp, which is super important because otherwise I wouldn't see anything. This room tends to get quite dark. Here in the back is my sewing dummy and she's not my size so I'm using her as a pinboard right now. Let me show you what is in my desk. So here we have my tools, different kind of appliances, hot glue gun, that kind of stuff, my leatherman, everything for punching holes, putting eyelets in, cutter knife, all these kind of things that you need. And on the right side, here is uh, my painting stuff. I used to do art in school quite much and now I hardly ever do it anymore except for when I need to do like sketches of dresses that I want to make. Quite a shame because I used to enjoy drawing. Painting? Not so much, I'm not good with the colour. So I've got all my colours and a little a little sketchbook and in here is most of my stuff regarding pens and pencils and brushes and this kind of thing. Those are really cool by the way, those little roll things that you can put all longish stuff in. It's kind of like a housewife or hussif or whatever you call that. Let's not forget this very important piece of equipment, always stay hydrated. Or as one of my friends said, drink water, it will maintain your wonderful figure. <laughs> then here, way in the back, we have my sewing dummy, which is not my size anymore. It wasn't even when I was wearing like a size XS, so this was never my size, if I'm being honest. Because I don't have a waist, apparently. And I'm using this as a pinboard right now for all my to-do lists, and you can see I've got quite a lot to do. All the way then, the back is my flattening board and this thing, this black thing is where my tripod is usually stored in so that it's out of the way. Let's zoom in a little closer on all the crap I still have to do. This is currently my list of sewing projects just for this year. As you can see, I've done only three of those and the rest is still pending because I'm held up with my transitional stays because I'm doing them all by hand and it takes forever. And down here is my list of video ideas that do not include my reticule project because that's already pretty much planned out and this is just random ideas I have for videos that I can do in between which I find are usually way more popular. <laughs> I guess it's having a face in it or it not being so damn technical then people like it a lot more but I'm all about the tutorials and the watch me sewing stuff videos because I feel like those are more instructive but they tend to be more boring I'm aware of that I just prefer them and this is the good part these are my books I think I already posted a picture of those on Instagram I try to buy as many as I can afford but these things get expensive so um, it's a very slow process these aren't all the books I've read. I've read way more, I think twice as much, but I usually got them from the library, so I don't have them here. And if I like a book very much, I am going to buy it. And you know how you're always trying to have some kind of system in book sorting? <laughs> you know, some do it by color. I don't get that. I really don't get sorting anything by color. Um, I usually try to sort it either by a time period or by subject which doesn't always work out and in the end no matter how creative you're trying to be you always sort them by size which is just something that happens I guess so down here on the lower shelf we have um, here on the left is that uh, that women's magazine that I have a collection of this is my research stuff where I put articles in that I've copied out then down here mostly the heavy books see it's all sorted by size these are big ones that are very much catalogs or this kind of stuff. The stuff that's heavier with a really, really nice, good
good quality prints in it. And at the top here we have like the specialty books, which is more background knowledge, not that many pictures. And that's also the kind of stuff that fits in your handbag. I usually distinguish books in three different ways. There's uh, books for the coffee table, which are the really big ones. There's books to read in the bathroom when you're in the bathtub. And there's books to carry around with you in your handbag for any occasion. And that usually goes by size and subject. That's how I do it. These are my fabric boxes. I really like the transparent ones because you can see what's in there. This is planned projects or half finished projects or just leftover fabric that I think I might use later for something. And oh, <laughs> you can see IKEA bed sheets already, like two different sizes. Then um, on the right side, there's my little box of things. That's usually when I have a, an ongoing project and there's little scraps of fabric. And I don't know if I'm going to use them for something else, but I also might use them in the project. So I don't want to throw them away because they might be used for later because otherwise you have to go buy a whole yard of fabric for just one tiny little scrap piece that you need for something that you didn't predict and I don't like that. So I keep it and I only throw this kind of stuff away when I know I'm really finished and I'm not going to use it for anything else. Also there's my, um, my unfinished project somewhere down in this little basket. I think there's my Regency Spencer that <laughs> I'm never going to finish. So up there there's my tool thingies, tool boxes. It's not a proper tool box, but it's a box with stuff in it. So um, there's my hat box and my two cloche hats on headstands. They're not really for anything costumey, I just think they're pretty and I didn't have any other place to store them. There's the microphone that I bought recently in order to do voiceovers. I'm quite happy with it actually. And in the back there are my two patterns of fashion because those don't really fit into my bookshelf so they have to be standing upright against the wall otherwise they would just be flying around everywhere. I think I'm going to show you what's in those boxes now but I'll need to untangle my camera from this tripod first. Okay, left box. You can already see my, my steel poking out. And there's a lot of ribbons, um, my beads are in there, my buttons are in this little wooden box, all that kind of stuff. Stuff that you need but that doesn't fit in my sewing box because it's quite small. Everything that's too bulky or just looks messy is hidden in here. Then on the right side we have my electronics equipment. This is where my camera and my, my photo camera usually sleep and there's my external hard drive and all this type of stuff just so that it's all in one place. I didn't try to cram the microphone in there because I was afraid that it would break. So and as you can see this is all my production stuff. I have my other sewing dummy over here in the corner because it doesn't fit in my sewing corner anymore. I usually carry these around the whole apartment for some projects. So this is the, the place where it usually stays on the other side. Also, I can look at it from a distance. This is very cramped. This whole apartment is quite cramped. But now I have my, I don't know, two and a half square meters of sewing space. So I feel like I'm a very accomplished grown up now. And this is my very, very cramped bedroom. So I apologize because this one is so much smaller than the old one. We just stuffed all the furniture in here and now it's always kind of messy. Whoa, and I've got an echo. Ooh, this is weird. So yeah, um, this is the closet where most of my costumes are now. My boyfriend and I swapped. He has the small left side now and I've got the wide right side. I usually don't even put many clothes in there. I have a couple of blouses that I store in there and the rest is just costume, so they take up way too much space. But first, well, this is my uh, luggage that I have to throw out because it colors everything pinkish red. So this is just a piece of garbage. Up here is my masks and Oh, you can really see my mask here. <laughs> I've got a couple of masks that I never wear. I really should. Up there, um, they're actually my antique 
things. I've got a couple of antique bits and pieces down here is accessories and everything made from silk like my blackberry reticule also my silk stockings and all this kind of small stuff that keeps vanishing i have all of this here in one of these boxes then up there is my false rump which i made um because i wanted to get rid of some leftover stuff so now i have a false rump it's quite nice actually it really looks good um here like two gargoyles watching over my prized possessions uh, my old stuffed animals that I, <laughs> I took with me when I moved out because I was afraid my mom would throw them away. Don't judge me. I'm really attached to those. Then um, there's the acid-free box down here, the bluish-gray one. This here. There's my silk jacket in there, which I wanted to show you a while ago, but um, I really have to deep clean the apartment before I do that so that it doesn't get dirty. Then on top of that box is the box the box came in, which I saw and didn't want to throw away because it's just the perfect size to store costuming in. And so now the brown box has my stays and my corsets in it. Okay, let me open this up now. Yeah, you can see where my focus is really. Well, I can't, because of my bed's here, I can't go far enough away so that you can see the whole thing. Um, yeah, so modern clothes that is this stuff and this includes some stage costumes or stuff i don't wear anymore that i can't get rid of because uh, it's nostalgic so this is my modern clothes i have way more hangers than i need i need to get rid of those this isn't actually that much stuff and then here we're coming to the historic stuff and this stuff gets so bulky actually most of the bulk is from my victorian dress that has a really bulky underskirt and I'm going to show you this whole outfit sometime soon. And then the skirt, which is very space consuming as well. And even the... Oh, that's the apron front thing. No, yes, it's the apron front thing. And then there's the jacket. So this whole... 20 centimeters to 30 centimeters area is just uh, my Victorian dress and underskirts, dresses I don't wear anymore that I keep in case my sister comes around and most of it is white. When did I stop making mostly white dresses? I look so bad in white and you can see all these skirts it gets kind of cramped down there. So um, yeah this mess, um, <laughs> I'm always cold so I have like a thousand blankets lying around so this is the one that I have under my other blankets in winter so this doesn't concern you really then down here this is a fake fur blanket that my sister gave me it cost over a hundred bucks and it is so soft and it looks so realistic and I asked her when she bought it okay if you don't need this anymore don't throw it away. I don't care when, maybe in 10 years, but I want to make something out of this. It's so pretty and it looks so realistic and it's so soft. It's amazing. I even washed this and it's still awesome and super soft. So um, I think I might make myself some Victorian jacket out of this or something. And then here's my Victorian muff, which I made to match with my Victorian dress with the fabric here don't think I will ever wear these together but just in case I even this took ages I, I sewed in a secret pocket somewhere here yeah it's here you can't see it so that I can store my stuff in there and nobody will see haha <laughs> I'm so sneaky and down here are my American Duchess shoes they are way at the bottom because I don't need those at the moment last bit now you're going under my bed which is very, very dusty right now, even though... And there's a sock. Oh my god. Living with a guy, I tell you. It's terrible. Everything's always dirty. This had to go under the bed because it wouldn't go anywhere else. And in here are my bum pillows, except for the false rump, because it's too big to fit in there. And uh, some of my sashes and this kind of stuff. And for some reason, my Georgian corset, uh, it's not a corset, my Georgian stays are in there too. Oh, it's really dirty. Um, I will clean that up later. Things have been rather dusty over here. There's lots of pollen in the air. 
can't open a window without everything being covered in this like fine film of yellow gray dust so that's not very attractive i'm sorry about that so and this is it now you know where i store all my stuff i still feel like it's not quite enough but um i don't have <laughs> any more space for any more dresses need to get rid of some okay yeah so that's it thanks for watching my room tour thingy which is actually more like a room corner to thingy and now you know where i store my stuff in case that entertains you. Bye!